Man identified only as Bertie shot dead in Portland drive-by. A man was shot dead in a drive-by shooting in Falkland community in the Brownbrook, Portland, on Thursday afternoon. The deceased had been identified only as Bertie of a Brownbrook address. Preliminary reports are that Bertie was standing near a bar shortly after 5.45 p.m. when a silver Toyota Corolla Axiomoto car drove up with three men aboard. Explosions were heard and the car reportedly sped off. Bertie was found suffering from gunshot wounds to the head. He was taken to the nearby hospital by the police where he was pronounced dead. Six persons have been murdered in Portland Police Division since the start of the year. Decomposing body of man found at Trelawney home. The decomposing body of a man was found in York Pastor in Wakefield on Wednesday. Dead is 59-year-old Errol Shirley. Reports from the police are that around 6.31 p.m., Shirley's body was found at his home with stab wounds to the chest and head. Teacher charged for smashing car windshield during argument with Charles' father. A teacher who allegedly smashed the wear windshield of a vehicle belonging to her child's father during an argument has been charged in relation to the incident. Charged with malicious destruction of property is Felica Hunter, otherwise called Phil, a 30-year-old teacher of Luana District in St. Elizabeth. According to the police, on May 19, Hunter was involved in an argument with her father's child at home. During the dispute, it is reported that she used an object to smash the wear windshield of a Tata Isis motor car. The matter was reported to the police and Hunter was taken into custody where she was arrested and charged. Head of the police division, Superintendent Courage Minto, said the teacher remained in custody and taken to the parish court on Friday. Police High Command, Moss Welfare Branch Commissioner of Police Dr. Kevin Blake has announced that the Police High Command is looking at establishing a welfare branch for members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The least we can do is ensure that we take care of our well-being of these members when we put them out there, the Commissioner stated. Blake was quick to assure the cops that we build out this welfare branch not to compete with the Federation but to entrench and institutionalize what exists by leveraging all the work that you have been doing as a federation. The High Command has no business shunning the responsibility he declared while noting, we have to get it right. We are operating in an environment with limited resources. That means it makes no sense we throw resources from various angles at the same problem. We need to optimize. And the reason why I'm not seeing much more in that light is that we have not yet determined the structure we can plug into the Police Federation and with our Welfare and Wellness Division that will become a branch, Blake stated. So we have not yet fully fleshed out what the branch of the Welfare and Wellness branch will look like. And its Welfare and Wellness, we want to incorporate everything he added. He was speaking on the first of the two-day Jamaica Police Federation 81st Joint Central Conference at the Hilton Hotel Resort on Tuesday. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark says government intends to develop a procurement catalog for the public service. Minister of Finance Dr. Nigel Clark said government intends to develop a procurement catalog for the public service. He said this will make the procurement of certain categories of goods more efficient. He made the announcement at the Caribbean Public Sector Financial Committee Management Conference earlier this week. Dr. Clark noted that to solve the issue, a shared services approach will be employed. He stated that the process involves having a single procurement that is requested on a specific basis. He added that a bid will then take place with suppliers are determined. Dr. Clark said only the bid by the guidance of the castle procurement will be more efficient. It is our intention to develop a procurement catalogue for the public service that will make the procurement of certain categories of goods extraordinarily efficient. And it, this aspect of public procurement reform 
is inextricably linked to the shared services modality that I'd have just described. So if you think about it this way, in pro we have procurement departments right across the public service. Every ministry department and agency here has their own procurement department, true? What we're going to do about it is to essentially employ the shared services solution to address the issue of procuring goods that are commonly used across the public service. So what will happen is that there will be a single procurement that goes out on an annual basis, or it's, in some cases it might be uh, every two years or every three years or every year, that remains to be determined, whereby the government will say, we intend to purchase up to 100 pens over the next year. We need people to come in and bid for the price at which you will supply pens to the government. New Police Federation head, ready to navigate the task ahead. While there are several issues befitting the Jamaica Police Federation, the newly elected chairman of the 84th year organization, Sergeant Arlie McBean, says she is up to the task. As a representative, you must have that mindset to navigate because those who have placed their confidence in you will expect you to lead the charge to navigate through all those their challenges, stated McBean. As you rightfully say, the road rough. I don't look at the rough road. I look at the challenges that appear at that particular time and see how best we can all harmoniously navigate together, the chairman added. Matt Bean, who is the first female head of the federation, was elected again to lead the organization five years after she last held the post. Matt Bean, who will serve a year in office, was selected during an election process which lasted for several hours on Wednesday evening, the final day of the Federation's two-day annual conference held at the Hilton Rose Hall Resort and Spa in St. James. Sergeant Lloyd Duncan, who was returned as an executive member and is a welfare officer, was also elected to serve as General Secretary for the Federation, which represents rank and file members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The two parts of an eight-member executive will meet this Friday to assign the various portfolio's responsibilities. The results will be placed on the Federation's website. Well, it is always important to do with the internal framework. You know how we can fix things going forward in order to serve our members better, stated McBean, adding that she felt the Federation was going to do a good job. We have had some unprecedented events, but we have to see how best we can navigate through them and see how best we can look at the most innovative ways to create a space and an atmosphere for the rank and file members to serve the citizens of Jamaica as best as possible, Matt Bean stated. The Federation Chairman spoke of other challenges that her team will need to address. Definitely, we will have to do some analysis of our strengths, our weaknesses, and the threats that exist. We will also have to look at how we can improve various areas and also improve on communication and strategies through transformation in representation for everyone, navigating as best as possible for greatness and striving harmoniously, argued Matt Bean. We also want to motivate the opportunities whilst admiring and advancing the versatility of our members in various areas through transformational thrusts that currently exist, the chairman added. Sergeant Matt Bean was first elected to the post in May of 2018, but in January of 2019, she was voted out of office by members who raised issues about her leadership of the organization. However, the Supreme Court ruled in March of that year that she should immediately be reinstated. With Wednesday's vote, Matt Bean replaced Inspector Codner, who was elected chairman in March. Codner replaced Corporal Ron James, who had been at odds with the police high command and was indicted over remarks he made in July last year at the colleague's funeral. When asked, if the issue with Corporal James has cast a shadow over the Federation, Matt Bean said this could be seen as a test for a Federation to deal with. I wouldn't consider it a shadow over the Police Federation, but it is a test for the Federation to see the level of tenacity that we all have as representatives, to see the level of unity that exists as a body, to see the level of versatility of the rank and file, 
and how we can now lead the church to correct what is happening unitedly and to see how we can be further leaders and future servants in national security. So, there will always be shadows over organizations that yield success always, and we have to be prepared for that, argued McBean. In the meantime, McBean refused to comment a voice note making the rounds on social media in which she is heard clashing with a Federation member during a meeting. In the unedited record, McBean is heard calling the member a liar and saying that the blood of Jesus was against the accused. The only ear I will clear is that I have no comments about it at this time respectfully, stated McBean when asked about the matter. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.